What I am looking at today is classroom assessment. We seem to be asked to do it, required to do it. So with the teacher's hat on, why do we have to test students? Why do we have to assess students? Okay, so we, uh, we test internally against a standard grade of entry and exit sometimes at the end of a course by completing an external exam which students have worked towards. Um, but assessment that is a measure of progress during a course, teachers use it to measure improvement and students use it to check where they are um, at a certain level. Administrators, that's management in schools, use assessment to gauge whether or not students can, can or should move up. We re require documentation, lots of paperwork um, to prove that it's happening. But there is a difference. If you have a look, there are... So I've got the dictionary definition. <coughs> this is the, probably the one that's in the classroom. It's an Oxford Flash Learner Dictionary. A test, evaluation, and assessment. If you have a look at those three, one of them is a little bit different. And two of them are very similar. Which is the one that's different? First one. First one, yeah. Um, if you think of the word, uh, the, the, the term evaluation test, it's actually a paradox. Okay? Um, evaluation is forming, and this is the dictionary definition. Sometimes we need to be reminded of this because we get bogged down. Okay? So a test is an examination of knowledge, ability, consisting of questions to answer as activities to perform. I've noticed here, look, in this school we have. Level change tests take place weekly. Okay, everybody has bought into or developed their own entry level test. What is a level? We know the CFR gives us certain discrete um, descriptors which we have to then fit into boxes. But assessment and evaluation is different, and that's what teachers have been asked to do in classes. And this is really tricky because we think we should give them a test, but actually, what we need to do is to evaluate and to assess what? What are we assessing? What are we evaluating? These are more or less very similar, aren't they? Very similar. Um, so, yes, progress needs to be evaluated and assessed, but how? And should teachers give random or regular, say, weekly tasks to assess progress or to check language use or to pick up errors? Question for you. Are teachers trying to catch students out or catch them being good. Yeah, that sounds that's directly from a parenting course, catch them being good. But that's what we want to do when we're assessing progress. We want them to use the right, the target language that we've taught. So the right, so we should we set traditionally, you know, weekly set tests, ticky boxes, gap fills, multiple choice. Um, these don't involve speaking in groups, but, but the traditional type of questions. Evaluation tests, I don't like the idea because it doesn't sit very well because there are two different definitions. Okay. Um, which do students prefer? It's a good question. So students are used to standardised tests from a very early age. So familiar standard tests tend not to be questions. They're more easily validated. They're reliable. Yeah. Um, they, but they can't really be expected to evaluate personal progress. Okay, so you have a class full of twelve people. You have twelve different learning rates, learning styles. Um, but tests are accepted as part of the norm, so there's there is a place for them. Uh, but actually, we find students like to have an opportunity to practice what they're learning. So task-based activities are really popular. Of course they are, in the classroom. So my question is, how can we use these to assess and evaluate progress? This is our challenge, okay? Um, students like to have feedback, which shows that they've achieved the ability to do something, or that they may need more practice, and, and you might need to go back and do something. So which one is better? The multiple choice gap fill, or a group task, which is checking speaking along with individual feedback? This is what I'm trying to work towards. So the, the test is the traditional, trusted, familiar, defined, and the other is informative, communicative, interactive, immediate. And it might provide washback into the classroom by feeding into the cycle of learning. 
And this is my my um, my pencil of the next. There we go. Okay. So if we can, um, if we if we take speaking tasks, and I have a few to show you. Um, speaking tasks. Um, it's harder if we're assessing speaking tasks. It's harder to, to define. It's more subjective. Um, and probably therefore more valuable because teachers can give individual performance ratings and give immediate feedback to each individual. It's immediate, it's effective, it's actually, you're learning while you're getting your assessment. Happy days. It's, it's efficient. Um, so teachers can also choose then to revise elements that need revision, um, either with the whole class or, or individually. So we look at, this is called washback. So we sometimes hear about the washback effect when we're learning about tests. Um, washback means it's feeding back into the classroom. The washback effect has seemed to be, it's been forgotten a little bit. It's very useful. Okay, feeding back into the classroom. So you might have to go back and teach it again. A different way. Or practice it a bit more. Okay, um... So each type, yeah, are useful for checking progress in competence and performance. So yeah, sure, combine both types, use tests and use assessment and progress, uh, progress evaluation in uh, tasks. So now, <coughs> randomly or regularly? Okay, that's the question. I think you should test and assess. Randomly, run, run out of time. Randomly to... Um, to, to give the supplies element and, and the feeling of being tested regularly to show that students are feeling it's part of the routine, it's part of the system. Both, everything's valid and measured in different ways. So I want to show you some different assessment activities. Lovely. The big ad. Oh, I've got a DID one here. You could equally have Power City one, Harvey Norman. All right, so let's take a look three different groups in the class. All right, I'm gonna give you, you're gonna have the DID ad, and you guys are gonna have the Power City ad, and you guys are gonna have the Harvey Norman ad. And it's quarter size Irish time, so it's a decent size. Now, there's only one, I'm not gonna make photocopies. No photocopies. <laughs> because why, we all have our phones. And in the group, everybody has the page. Basically, you set questions and answers. You keep a set of questions, and you can have a set of questions and answers. You keep the answers for yourself, you give the questions to the other group. They have to discuss, find. Um, what kind of test is this replacing? And is it testing? Is it assessing? <coughs> one thing um, I should say is that if you have one copy, you'll find people take out their phones mm -hmm. and photocopy, and then they have their own little copy. Yeah. They don't need to photocopy. This wonderful device. Brilliant. They're writing questions. They're talking about the answers. They're reading. You can use this as a, a replacement for the, the um, reading comprehension question. You don't need to think for hours and hours about ABC. Okay. Find the answers. It's all against the clock. And then you read the answers back, and if you got the answers right, the other group says, yes, that's there, no, that's not there. You can do it with free newspapers. You can use it with anything uh, at all, like similar but different, where you have to it's <coughs> find the information. It's, it's, compre it's uh, information uh, comprehension question. Right, I have three minutes left. I've got another type for you. Um, oh, how do we assess? Sorry, how do we assess that? You go around and listen. Exactly the way you do. You have a class list. And if you have a rating system, one, you can use this, you can do it. Whatever the target language is, question for me. Two, you need a few mistakes, a bit more practice. Number three, you really need to do this again in class. That's very easy. That's very easy, very doable, and no extra paperwork. Um, okay, this is not speed dating. <laughs> okay, this is your good old fashioned. Information exchange. So I love authentic materials, but also we do have some really good published course materials. So I think they had something from New English File. It was the teacher's book and it was the information exchange. Somebody mentioned the crossword. 
person A, person B. Yeah. <coughs> what happened here is that um, they did the activity themselves, and rather than getting the information from the other person, they asked them to do it for themselves, and then we line them up. All the pairs, very good. Now line up. Exchange your information for a minute each. I'm on a timer. I have my phone. To a minute. And then everybody has to move one place to the left. Time for a minute. Same, same. It's a, what are they testing? What are we assessing? The teacher again is listening in. Listen to the pattern. Um, we're listening. We've got, uh, I'm listening for a target language. So it could be anything or whatever the, the, the topic has been. But again, one, I hear you do it. Tick. Two. You can all track this, maybe individuals. Three. We all need to do this again. Very easy. And, oops. The third one I actually don't have. Uh, but this is basic task based learning. You write six items, roll the dice, it's landed on number six. So I'm going to talk about number six again. See the pattern teachers follow, listening. It's exactly the same as the free practice ex you know, standard. There's nothing wrong with it. All you're doing is you're going to listen. Can do it, we need more practice, we need to do this again. And there is one more thing we need to do when we're feeding back. Can you see yourselves? Okay, we need to reflect and we need to build in self reflection into the classroom. We need to build it in as part of the assessment progress. Self reflection means self assessment, and as you do this, students become more and more aware of their own strengths and weaknesses, they start to ask you, what do I need to do to get my listening skills better? I really struggled in that. It's not speed dating, but I found it really hard, you know, to, to, to stop talking and listen to the other person. So reflect, self-reflection, build it in as part of the assessment um, uh, process. So we have to test. We expect it, it's familiar, it's discreet. It's valid and it's reliable, but we need to evaluate and assess. Teachers need to evaluate and assess students. Students need to evaluate and assess themselves, and they do evaluate and assess and test their teachers. So it's a cycle and it's a process, and I'm out of time. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Mary. Any questions? So. My question is to start off and everybody else is thinking of theirs is so you are saying in addition to the pen and paper progress tests mm. that are run by the administration, yeah. this is the teacher running this as assessment for learning within yeah. the class. This is assessment for learning for checking progress. Because so much time and money and expense and expertise is put into tests, external tests that are I mean they are valid. And people do expect them, but I think you feel more value as a student, you feel more valued as an individual if someone's paying you more attention. Mm -hmm. And from a teacher point of view, I think it, you feel better, you feel like you're coming on and more. And if you have this, um, there's a lot of paperwork involved now, it's all top down, there's lots of paperwork, teachers hate it. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is to help teachers realise the value of not testing in class but evaluating and assessing what you have done. Not even on Friday, Thursday. Do it on Thursday. And if we need to recast, we need to do something again to practice it, then, and we need to fit in the holes. If there are little errors, right, let's do it again. We could be doing second conditional, and people have missed out the, uh, the subjunctive, if I were, if I was, if I were. So we could have a whole little talk about that then on Friday. So part of your learning, you're assessing, yeah, you're assessing people, see where the gaps are, fill them in. So it's all part of learning and it becomes a cycle then. But the self-reflection, it's really important to build that in. Mm. It does, I don't think you need to spend a lot of time in class either. So it's, I don't know if it's kind of an extra topic, but um, we're talking about how you, you can see the gaps in learning knowledge by, by kind of mistakes they make or, or errors or whatever. But how do you develop that in teachers? I get it all the time, say teachers do speaking exams or do assessments with students and they say, yeah, they make lots of mistakes, but I don't know what are the mistakes. What are the mistakes? When you're starting a an activity like that, you say, I'm going to, I'm listening for particular things. Yeah. 
Because we're a lot of the time where we're told to let a lot, let it go, let it go. 